Hello everybody and welcome to another How To Destiny 2 video, a beginner's guide. Today we're going to be looking at the Warlock class. Yes, that's right, we're starting things off with one of the three characters, the Warlock. I know a lot of you are excited since a lot of new players actually choose the Warlock. So, we're going to be looking at the three light subclasses as well as the stasis subclass. We've got Voidwalker, Stormcaller, Dawnblade, and of course the stasis one, Shadebinder. Let's get into it. Okay, we're gonna start things off with Voidwalker. So first things first, you have two rifts. The Healing Rift, which is conjure a well of power that continuously heals those inside of it. 15 seconds of uninterrupted healing, even if you do take damage, your your health will start to recover and also give you an overshield, but the minute you step out of it, you no longer get that healing. So make sure you are in that rift for that full 15 seconds. Next, we also have the Empowering Rift. Conjure a well of power that increases weapon damage for those inside of it. So the Empowering Rift lasts 15 seconds as well, and you get a 20% buff increase to your damage. As you can see, while we were standing in it, we hit him for 18-13 for a crit, and then 21-75. So next, we'll be looking at the Warlock Jumps, or Glides, in fact. Um, the first one, we're going to knock off this list because it is a Voidwalker exclusive movement mode it is called blink you jump while airborne to teleport a short distance strafe glide jump while airborne to activate glide and start an airborne drift with strong directional control next up probably my favorite glide in the game for warlocks burst glide jump while airborne to activate glide and start an airborne drift with a strong initial boost of speed now you might be wondering why is this your favorite boom and it's because if you actually do it properly, you can Warlock Skate just like this right here, where you get that strong boost horizontally, and you can get to a fight fast. Okay, so last but not least, we have the final glide, which is the Balance Glide. Uh, jump while airborne to activate glide and start an airborne drift with both moderate speed and directional control. It is the only glide you cannot find on the Voidwalker subclass. Okay, so that covers it for the rifts and the glides, which are going to be uh, in every other subclass. Now we're going to tackle the meaty greedy stuff, which is the grenades and the subclasses themselves. So let's get into it. Vortex Grenade, a grenade that creates a vortex which continually damages enemies trapped inside. This grenade will last around roughly 3.5 to 4 seconds, continuously damaging the enemies as you can see on the screen. Axion Bolt, a bolt of void light that forks into smaller bolts on impact that seeks out enemies. Also, this grenade implodes over 1 second and splits into a maximum of 3 bolts. Scatter Grenade, a grenade that splits into many sub-munitions and covers a large area with multiple explosions. And by multiple, they mean 8 to be exact. Okay, now that that's out of the way, let's look at Top Tree Voidwalker. The Attunement of Chaos. Entropic Pull, strike an enemy with this melee ability to drain your enemy's life force and use it to recharge your grenade. Chaos Accelerant, press L1, overcharge your grenade, making it deadlier and more effective, which you technically have to hold, I don't know why it says press. Bloom, void ability kills, causes enemies to explode. And Cataclysm, Nova Bomb travels slowly and seeks enemies. Detonations shatter into smaller secret projectiles, fires your weapon at the Nova Bomb to detonate it early. Also, we call this top tree, also the Slova Bomb tree. So over here we can see some gameplay, I'm just going to let it play out. I hold the grenade to make it blow up even bigger, which that would have been a scatter grenade. As you can see, it was bigger and it was kind of slower. And then we're going to do the melee right over here on this here. We punch him, boom, he explodes. Um, this guy didn't actually end up blowing up, so then we're going to test out the Nova Bomb right here. That's Carl around the community. I throw the Slova Bomb, boom, it hits does a bunch of Axion Bolts and continues to follow him and hit him afterwards. So that's the Slova Bomb tree. We're gonna move on to the middle tree. So, Attunement of Fission, which is the middle tree for Voidwalker. Um, before we get into the perks and all that, I just want to give a fair warning. If you're new to the game and you're a New Light player and you don't know much about Destiny, three of the subclasses, Void, Light, and Solar, they all have a middle tree in their subclasses, and they're all locked behind the Forsaken Paywall expansion. Uh, because when Forsaken released, that's when those subclasses were added. So if you're a New Light player, you're not going to have access to them until you buy the Forsaken DLC. 
as of right now, Season of the Lost, uh, Season 15, I don't know if Bungie will change that maybe when Witch Queen comes out, um, but as of right now, you need to buy these. So, Attunement of Fission, let's get into it. So, Nova Warp, step between dimensions to subvert the laws of physics. Press R1 to teleport a short distance. Press R2 to unleash a deadly void eruption. Atomic Breach, this melee creates a void explosion. Handheld Supernova, hold L1, convert your grenade into a short range void blast on release. And Dark Matter, void ability kills grant health and melee grenade and class ability and energy. As you can see here, I hold the grenade to do the handheld supernova. It has a decent amount of range. Uh, I had two dark matter, which gave me more of my grenade. I punched him, he blows up, spreads the explosion. You see, I pop Nova Warp. I do R1 to so do some dashes to show you guys. You hold R2, bop! Big, big AoE explosion, bop! Big AoE explosions. So, that's Nova Warp. Next up, we've got Bottom Tree Voidwalker. Okay, Bottom Tree Voidwalker, my favorite of the three, also known as the Devour Nova Bomb. Devour, kills with this melee ability, fully regenerates your health for a short time afterwards. Kills restore additional health. Feed the Void, consume your grenade energy to regenerate your health, grants the Devour effect, insatiable. While the Devour effect is active, killing enemies extends its duration and recharges your grenade. Vortex. Nova Bomb creates a singularity which continuously damages enemies trapped inside. Kills with Nova Bomb grants the Devour effect. So what we're basically doing here is we're going to punch this Cabal. We get the Devour buff. It's 10 seconds. Any kill afterward actually will extend the Devour timer back to 10 and fully heal us. This is very, very useful in solo activities. Um, if you're ever trying to solo a dungeon maybe. You can also consume your grenade, and that also regenerates your health fully, and also gives you a stack to 10. And any void kills even on your gun also refreshes your grenade, as you can see. Now we're going to throw the Nova Bomb. Boom! As you can see, Carl steps back. He's smarter than that, but it stays there and damages the enemy for quite a while. And we died. <laughs> uh, onward, we're going to switch to Dawn Blade, so I'll see you guys for Dawn Blade and its grenades. So next up we have the Solar Grenade, a grenade that creates a flare of solar light that continuously damages enemies trapped inside. This is basically the solar version of the Vortex Grenade. Firebolt Grenade, a grenade that unleashes bolts of solar light at nearby enemies. And I know what you're thinking, hold on, isn't this the same as an Axiom Bolt? Yes, yes it is. A Fusion Grenade, an explosive grenade that attaches to enemies, these here are very very good in either PvP with a certain build or if you use them in PvE against Atheon in the Vault of Glass raid. Celestial Fire, send out a spiral of three explosive solar energy blasts. Winged Sun, fire weapons send celestial fire and throw grenades while gliding. Airborne final blows extend the effect of heat rises and grants melee energy. Heat Rises. Hold L1, consume your grenade energy to extend glide time and improve in-air accuracy. Icarus Dash, activate while mid-air to dodge, gain an additional dodge while under the effect of heat rises. So over here we're going to show off what the top tree Dawn Blade can do. There's the melee, as you can see it's spread out into three, the back legionary dodged it. We consume our grenade to get heat rises, which then allows us to use the famous Icarus Dash twice before it goes on a cooldown for five seconds. R.I.P. Icarus Dash, you will be missed. Sadly, it's been nerfed and you can no longer use it twice regularly. Then, as you can see, you can use it while in your super and you shoot down sword slashes. And poor Carl ate all of those. Next up, Middle Tree Dawnblade. Middle Tree Dawnblade, also known as Well of Radiance. Thrust your Daybreak Sword into the ground, the sword continuously projects a powerful aura that heals and empowers nearby allies, increasing their weapon damage and protecting them from the effect of stasis. Guiding Flame, strike an enemy with this melee ability to inflict burn damage and empower yourself and nearby allies. Divine Protection, hold L1, convert your grenade into a blessing that heals ally targets and drops over shields you and your allies can pick up. Activate Divine Protection while gliding to hover in midair.
Benevolent Dawn. Healing or empowering allies regenerate your grenade melee and rift energy. So over here, as you can see, Legionary standing right there. Shooting me, I hold the grenade, I throw it on the ground, it makes a little white aura. We're gonna pick that up, we're gonna get divine protection for 5 seconds, which grants us an overshield. We punch him, we get empowered for 10 seconds. So as you can see here, we're gonna shoot an incinerator. 1616 is currently the added with the melee, which is roughly a 20% buff um, from the shots I was getting before, which were at 1293. Then we're going to go ahead and go drop our Well of Radiance over here. We're trying to run. Come on, let me go. Woo! Drop our Well to kill Carl. And we're going to cut that out of the video, right? That wasn't supposed to happen. Like I was saying, we drop our Well of Radiance. Hiya! And then we start just melting him with a crisp 58,920 damage with our good old Reed's Regret with a boss spec and Vorpal weapon on that baby. And I forgot to test the buffs for for the Well of Radiance, but I do believe it's somewhere around 25%, I want to say. And no, you cannot stack a Well of Radiance on top of a Empowering Rift. Although I do believe you can stack your melee with the Well of Radiance. So guys, please be creative. Bump up that damage, you know? Igniting Touch. Strike a combatant with this melee ability to burn them. Defeating burning combatants causes them to explode. Faded for the Flame. Daybreak projectiles seek targets as they travel and upon impact launch a streak of deadly flames. Everlasting Fire. Killing an enemy with Daybreak extends its duration. Phoenix Dive. Activate while in midair to quickly descend and restore your health. While Daybreak is active, descent causes explosive damage and returns super energy. So, let's test this baby out. Right here, we're gonna start off with the punch. As you can see, he caught on fire and blew up. Then we throw our fusion grenade. Boom, it causes a f an explosion, but also explodes beside and causes the other target to explode. We pop our daybreak. We fire some shots at Carl, and I'm like, wait, we should probably test out against enemies. As you can see, I'll fire one. Boom, they blow up, double the damage, and I just shoot Carl with the rest of them. Hold circle. We do our divine dash. Which also, by the way, I forgot to mention, you can also do that regularly with a rift, although it won't consume your rift. Stormcaller Grenades. I feel like I'm repeating myself, but hey, Arc Bolt Grenade, a grenade that chains bolts of lightning to nearby enemies. Yes, same thing as the Fire Bolt and the Axion Bolt. Pulse Grenade, a grenade that periodically damages enemies inside its explosive radius. It's kind of like the arc version of the solar grenade and the vortex grenade, except it pulses instead of continuously doing the damage. Next, we have the storm grenade, which is actually a cool grenade. Storm grenade, a grenade that calls down a focused lightning storm. See, we throw it, it goes, bah, 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 and then it finishes. What an awesome grenade. Top Tree Stormcaller, also known as Emperor Palpatine. Chain lightnings, this electrocuting melee chains lightning from the struck target to nearby enemies. Transcendence. When cast with full grenade and melee energy, Storm Trance lasts longer and fully restores health. Arc Web. Enemies damaged by your grenade chain lightning to nearby enemies. Each grenade or melee chain returns grenade energy. Ionic Blink. Activate to teleport during Storm Trance. L3. Which would be your sprinting button. So we we pop Storm Collar right here. We're gonna do some... As you can see, the lightning chains from enemy to enemy when you hit one. We come up here, we see Carl, we hit him with a few lightning, the chains to off to another enemy. And here's some blinks right here at the end. Throw our grenade to see the arc web, you can see the lightning chains from the Carl to other enemies, as well as our melee. Really, this is the ultimate chain lightning build. Middle Tree Stormcaller, Chaos Reach. Unleash a long range channeled beam of concentrated arc energy. L1 and R1 press. Use while active to deactivate Chaos Reach early and save super energy. Ball Lightning. Fire an arc projectile that travels forward and releases a perpendicular bolt of lightning. Ionic Trace. Defeating enemies has a chance to create ionic traces. Collecting ionic traces creates energy to all your abilities. Pulse Wave. Being critically wounded triggers an energy wave that boosts yours and your allies' speed. So basically, Stormcaller is another reference. I would say Dragon Ball Z, you're basically firing the Kamehameha wave. And over here, you can see you throw your melee, boom, and hits two Cabal, one Cabal, but he gets disintegrated. We then hurt this enemy over here. It makes an Ionic Trace. You don't even have to have Storm kills for that. You just need to get kills, and eventually one of these little Ionic Traces will come following you. 
but make sure to pick it up because it'll only come for a little while and you can actually miss it. Next we charge Carl, we fire a Kamehameha wave and we end it short just so you can see that we keep some of the super energy. And yeah, it's awesome. Last but not least, we have Bottom Tree Stormcaller, the last of the arch subclass. Rising Storm, this electrocuting melee ability recharges your super grenade and melee energy. Landfall, on casting Storm Trance, fires a bolt of lightning into the ground, creating a devastating shockwave underneath you. Electrostatic Surge, your rift lasts longer, it charges faster, and you run faster when allies are near. Arc Soul, your rift now grants you an NA ally that uses it and Arc Soul to aid you in battle. AKA, the Arc Buddy Super. As you can see here, we strike him, we get a little bit of our melee back. Next up, we're gonna pop a rift, we get our Arc Soul for 15 seconds. Our little arc buddy's trying to follow us because we got pushed. There you go, look at him shoot. Pew pew pew! Pew pew pew! Pew pew pew! This is actually really useful in something like PvP where you're fighting other people. Next up, we're gonna line ourselves up here. We're gonna yeet and then BOP! A shockwave is created underneath us. You can see the little splatter go around and hits Carl. He doesn't like it. We're hitting him with our lightning, which is also chaining. And then bing bang boom, that's bottom tree storm collar, baby. Off, off to the last subclass of the video, Shade Binder, the stasis subclass. Penumbral Blast, raise your stasis staff against your foes, send a blast of stasis forward to freeze your target. Glacier Grenade, a grenade that creates a wall out of stasis crystals to block damage and freeze targets. These walls can be shattered for damage. Dusk Field Grenade, a grenade that shatters on impact, leaving behind a field that, that slows targets and freezes those who do not leave the volume. Cold Snap Grenade, a grenade that freezes on impact and sends another seeker to find and freeze targets. So we're gonna go over the aspects. Each character has four different ones. They're all unique. So over here we have Frost Pulse. Casting your Rift generates a shockwave that freezes nearby combatants. As well as Bleak Watcher, press and hold the grenade button to convert your grenade into a stasis turret that fires slowing projectiles at nearby targets. Really quickly here, we're going to show you an example. Here I'm popping off my rift, it freezes the target as you can see. I'm going to kill him and then we're going to consume our grenade and throw it when it's fully charged to do the turret, which this bad boy, whoo, it's really useful in end game content like Grandmaster Nightfalls. Keep that in mind, fellas. Okay, next two aspects. Ice Flare Bolts, shattering a frozen target spawns seekers that track and freeze other nearby targets. And Glacial Harvest, freezing targets create stasis shards around the frozen targets. Higher tier combatants creates more shards. As you can see here, I'm freezing them with my dust field. I kill them and they actually go and track other enemies for me. And then immediately once the last foe has been frozen, the cooldown for Glacial Harvest kicks off at 15 seconds, and I can pick up these here for more energy with the shards. And last but not least, Winter's Wrath the Super. Summon a Stasis Staff while your Super is active. Press R2 to cast a barrage of Stasis Shards that freezes targets. Press R1 to cast out a Shockwave that shatters all frozen targets. This thing is mean in the PvP. That is going to be it for today's video, guys. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this How to Destiny 2, a beginner's guide on Warlocks. We're going to be doing the Hunters next. This video has been a little bit longer than my last one because I have to go so much in depth with each character. Um, I know I didn't show off the Stasis Fragments. I'm going to be doing its own video for that because... We're running out of time and I don't want to make this any longer than it has to be. And I already have a small PSA to say after all this. But guys, please, thank you so much for watching. Hit that like button. Subscribe to the channel if you enjoy this kind of content. And guys, I also stream on Twitch, twitch.tv slash boommangaming. I'd really love to see you guys out there. Come hang out and chat. I'd love to help you out, give you guys some tips if you need help on Destiny. And that's going to be it for today, guys. I'm Boom 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 Man. And I'm out.